School's out and baseball is in final four mode. South Callaway and Clever will meet for the right to play Valley Catholic in the Missouri Class 2 Championships. And welcome to Metter Park on a perfect day turn night in Springfield where the shadows are now getting longer. With Dana Hughes, I'm Dave Stewart. Now, we had a chance to visit with both coaches before the game. Justin Snyder loves his clever team. He's not trying to fool anybody and say they got here by accident. He thinks they're really, really good. Oh, yes. He definitely has a lot of confidence in his team, and he should. This team was in the Final Four last year. They have three seniors who all start. They're very balanced up and down the lineup. They, they play solid defense, so he has a right to have a lot of confidence in his team. He's definitely not playing coy. South Callaway's heart and soul is the battery. Hunter Leeper, the pitcher. Conrad Kemper, the catcher. Well, you look at those two guys, the battery for this team. Hunter Leeper batting 500 on the season, but more importantly, as a pitcher, 2.54 ERA with 40 Ks. And then you look at the catcher, Conrad Kemper, has done an excellent job behind the plate in leading this team defensively. Valley Catholic wants to know who they play next for the title. We'll find out. South Callaway and Clever. That's next from Springfield.
We are back at Metter Park in Springfield, ready for the second Missouri Class II semifinal game. Clever against South Callaway. Clever is uh, in the neighborhood, as they say, about 20 minutes away. And for South Callaway, it was about a three-hour bus ride. So kind of a difference in the noise that you might hear in terms of <laughs> one is the home team, whether it's, you know, based on flip of the coin or not. There's a lot of Clever folks here tonight. Exactly. You look at the scoreboard and Clever is listed as the home team. And you can tell that by the stands. The fans are packed in, ready to cheer on their Bulldog team, I mean, I'm sorry, their Blue Jay team, and and uh, they've been here before. They're accustomed to this stage, and they're ready to play some baseball. Saw Jared Wood just a moment ago, his first year as the head coach for South Callaway, a full-time sub this year. He's going to be a full-time teacher next year, so he's excited about that. And this is the lineup that he'll sit out there. Leaper, Helsel, Hanger, followed by Kemper, Smart, Kemper, Kimenow, Williams, and Ben Seitz hits ninth. Hunter Leaper. Leads off. Part of the heart and soul of this South Callaway team, and he takes strike one. Jacob Burnett is the starting pitcher for Clever, and it was a, kind of a mystery which way that uh, they were going to go, and now we know it's Burnett. Second pitch, breaking ball is wide, and it's 1-1. Head coach Justin Snyder keeping his cards close to his vest on what pitcher he was going to have out there. He has Garrett Wolf, who is a very accomplished pitcher behind the plate as a catcher. Swings and misses, it's, it's one and two. And the contrast is Wolf is gonna throw mid 80s with a, an okay curveball. Burnett's gonna throw upper 70s really good Uncle Charlie. We're gonna see a good curveball here tonight. One, two. Leaper hits it in the air toward short left field. The shortstop able to drift back and squeeze it for out number one. We can set the defense for you in our second semifinal game. David Del Toro is in left. He will not be one of the hitters batting in this order. Uh, Pennywell brothers, David and Travis at shortstop and center field. You see Chance Wolf behind the plate. Bryce Wilson also does some pitching for this team. If the occasion were right, we could see some kind of a move where the third baseman comes in. Dax Hexel, one of the freshman starters on this team. Coach Wood likes to call him the little engine that could. He's very good with the bat, able to move runners. And that's why the third baseman, Wilson, has snuck up. Second pitch, flies one toward left. And an easy out, two up, two down. Perfectly placed defense for Clever. You can tell they've done their homework on their opponents, knowing exactly their tendencies with Dak Helsel being that guy in that two hole, handles the bat very well, drives the ball to opposite field. Left fielder Ranger Curtis there to make the play. Corey Hanger, another freshman, hits in the coveted three hole, watches a pitch go wide, and you know, we talked to Coach Wood about maybe the biggest surprise on this team this year is Hanger. Plays like a junior. Lightning fast, 19 stolen bases this year. He could end his career as their all-time steals record as he looks at strike one. It's one and one. Well, it tells you something about this team when you look at two freshmen being in that two-hole and three-hole and Corey Hanger being that guy from left field batting 404 on the season. A lot of confidence displayed in this young man to put him in that slot. Burnett skies one down the line. It will fall in foul territory. The count is one and two. Burnett coming into the game with nine starts, seven complete games out of the nine starts, a five and three record. 171 is his earned run average. 49 and two thirds innings, 60 strikeouts, just 22 walks. Very efficient. You can see his presence on the mound. He is a pitcher out there, not going to be overpowering, but mixes his stuff up very well. Actually has a little sneaky fastball right there, not big in stature, kind of disguises the ball well, and then it just seems to, before you know it, be on top of the plate. Hanger with a 2-2 count. In the air, should go out of play. The catcher takes a look, and nothing Wolf can do about that. And he'll try it again. Hey. 
Clever 26 and three coming into the semifinals. Again, the 2-2 offering is a breaking ball up in the zone and Hanger spanks that into center field for the first hit of the ball game. Nice job by Corey Hanger, staying back on the curveball, sweeping curveball that comes from Burnett. He just drives it right back up the middle. Good balance in the batter's box for the first hit of the game for the Bulldogs. Well, if Hunter Leeper is the heart, this is the soul. Conrad Kemper, the catcher, who's uh, also been very, very good as a pitcher in a limited role. Eight and a third innings, no runs given up. 14 strikeouts, five walks. He is a big, good-looking player. Batting clean up, and he couldn't resist a pitch up, swung through it, and he's down in the count 0-1. Nice size body for the catcher, a leader of this team, one of the senior leaders, only three, uh, uh, excuse me, four in the lineup today for the Bulldogs. Runner is going. The throw is wide. And a stolen base and a runner in scoring position is Corey Hanger. Chance Wolf, the catcher, gets a fastball right down the outside part of the play. And you can see he slips with his front foot. Left foot looked like it slipped on the plate. And it therefore allowed for the, the throw to be errant towards the shortstop side of second base. So a runner in scoring position now for Kemper. Down to the count 0 2. Calls for time is granted time. Boy, he asked for that late, but was given time. And again, it's a request. Yes. And as in that situation, you can see he asked for time, and he actually made the mistake of backing out of the box before the umpire gave him time. You have to still present yourself as a viable hitter in the box. Burnett again, 0-2. Hit in the air to short left field. The shortstop again going back in front of the left fielder. And Pennywell is able to squeeze it and no damage done. Clever is coming up next, bottom of the first. Back at Metter Park in Springfield, this is Missouri Class II semifinal baseball. Dana Hughes, Dave Stewart, we're delighted to be able to bring it to you. And, you know, I, I, I'm not necessarily doing a Chamber of Commerce plug, but it has absolutely been perfect. Some of the weather that we've had, some of the conditions as we look at Clever's order. It's Pennywell, Valance, and Wolf, one, two, three, followed by Pennywell, Curtis, and Martin. Bryce Wilson bats seventh. He's the third baseman, followed by Chance Comer and Jordan Burnett. The pitcher will hit in the ninth spot. Justin Snyder has, I'm not going to say quiet confidence because it's an exploding confidence. Yes. He said, as we talked to him before the game, if they're as loose and relaxed as they were at batting practice this morning, I think we're fine. Yep, and you know what, he's right. He's been around baseball for a long time. Only he's been with this program for in his second year now, but a very successful coach in the competitive level and showcase uh, for high school age kids around the country, the Midwest Nationals. 
uh, travel around. So he's been around a lot of quality baseball, and he's really developed this program very well. First pitch swung on and hit foul. Travis Pinnewell is down to the count 0 and 1. You talk about him being there a short time and being successful. How about 43 and 5? And going to the Final Four last year, just three seniors now. The bulk of this team's coming back. Got a chance to talk with him a bit during the week, and he reminded me, he said in 2008, just four years ago, they were 0 and 36. Three years ago, they had eight wins, and then last year in the Final Four, and this year here again in the Final Four, an amazing turnaround for the Blue Jays. He is the weights coach. He has him in the weight room, no question, getting stronger. That ball has popped up and out of play, and they will try it again. And uh, fair to say that Travis Pennywell likes every pitch that he's seen so <laughs> far. He's taking a healthy hack at it. Well, he came into the game batting 323, had seven doubles on the year. Not much power by the Blue Jays will be displayed, but they can spray the ball into the gaps. Leaper with a change up. And they'll have to throw him out at first. They throw it inside and they execute that beautifully. The first out of the game on a strikeout. Nice job by Kemper behind the plate to block the third strike and then hustle partway down to first base for well, the put out. You saw Leaper's numbers. We had him on screen a moment ago. 254 ERA, 33 and a third, 40 strikeouts, just nine walks facing Phillip balance what are the seniors on this team that he swings through strike one when you watch leaper on the mound you can see great body control his presence on the mound very confident just kind of nice and easy fluid motion no herky-jerky movements just very put together well and compact pushes downhill off the mound very well now we've yet to see uh, the bulldog pitcher Throw a ball yet. Balance down to the count 0-2. A 350 hitter. 16 RBIs coming into the final four. Good eye that time. <laughs> Borderline pitch. <laughs> Very good location on an 0-2 fastball. Don't want to make it too edible for the batter. Watch good location. Had a lot of pitches to miss. I'm, excuse me. The 1-2 is outside and, and it's 2-2 two -two. and the umpires did a really fine job in the earlier class two semifinal it's the same three they've just moved uh, behind the plate is david burke david weir is at first and ricky hammers on the third base side of the field the 2-2 two -two offering balance hits it up in the middle but that will be an easy 4-3 put out for the second out of the inning Nice job by Zach Marty on defense at second base, playing second base defensively, but being hit for in the batter's box. You can see why he's playing that position. And Zach Marty, one of the players who will not appear in the batting order, but he will be on the field, as you see up the middle. It's been Seitz in center, Helsel and Marty at short and second. The catcher is Conrad Kemper, Kemenow at first base. Number three hitter, Chance Wolf, a junior. We assume he's coming back for a senior year unless he can <laughs> declare. He's hitting 566, 40 RBIs. And don't be surprised in a closed situation if he throws an inning. Chops one toward shortstop, but it's the right player. The third baseman has the angle to cut in front, make the throw, and it's a 1-2-3 inning. Three up, three down, nothing yet on the board as we go to the top of the second inning. South Callaway and Clever. More baseball from Springfield and Metter Park coming up next.
Back at Meadow Park in Springfield with Dan and Hughes, I'm Dave Stewart. And what's wrong with this picture? Ah, there we go. The, the baby was trying to send some kind of a message. <laughs> I would love a piece of that banana if you'd be so kind. And another one. Thank you very much. What a life. <laughs> if we could all go back, just like a day. <laughs> Bradley Smart is the batter for South Callaway here. Top of the second. First pitch swinging at a ground ball. And the throw across. One pitch, one out. Pennywell to Curtis, and there's one gone. So far in this ball game, you're watching Hunter Leeper and Jordan Burnett really do a nice job of pounding the zone, working both sides of the plate, showing great control in all their pitches. And this is what you like to see, Dave, uh, two pitchers that are going to challenge the opposing offense, and that's what we're seeing right now. Smith Kemper is a sophomore third baseman. Quite likely he would pitch, uh, well, he'll pitch either way on Thursday, no matter the scenario, if it's third base game, uh, third place game of the championship. And what we've seen so far is very aggressive uh, South Callaway team, and Burnett may seem hittable to them, but his curveball is so good that it makes that fastball have a little more pop. And you can see he's not big in stature, but he has great, just like what we're seeing with Hunter Leeper, two guys that have good body control that are showing themselves as pitchers and not throwing on the mound. Stays compact, and is, when you watch his wind up, watch he get that knee towards third base, compact, pushes down well off the mound, leaves the curveball high right there, but Overall, very impressive. You know, sometimes a curveball way up is not a bad pitch. It's not. You, you want to be out of the zone. It's a misconception that every pitch you throw has to be a strike. It has to be able to set up another pitch, oftentimes against good hitters. Again up, and that should fall out of play right on top of us. And this is the sixth batter that Burnett has faced, and he's thrown three balls. So <laughs> he's pretty much... Uh, not just pounded the strike zone, but been around it enough where it's tempting for guys to swing. And, and if you can get a guy to chase at any pitch, letter higher above, advantage pitcher. Exactly. And you got to give a lot of credit to the Bulldogs because they're up there swinging. One, two in the air to right field. That ball is short. The better angle is for the second baseman. And Balance is able to go get it. Nice job of communication by Philip Valens, the second baseman. Makes a tough play look easy with solid hustle. Jason Kimenow will try to extend this inning with two out and nobody on base. He's a 5'11 junior, just a 2'16 hitter. Coming into the final four. And he takes ball one. The South Callaway team hasn't lost since senior night. Back on May 7th, got beat by Fulton 6-4. That is fouled down the right field line and out of play. And senior night is, it's one of those tricky things. It's, it's emotional for the kids because it's emotional for the parents. Yep. And sometimes it's like, okay, do you, when do you do the ceremony? Before the game, <laughs> after the game? Uh, so it, it can be a distracting night. They have not lost in a while. Fouled off back to the screen. The count goes to one and two. Talked about Jordan Burnett and being kind of sneaky in his delivery. F fastball seems to kind of have a little bit of pop, but it's well disguised when he's on the mound. And you can tell by the swings of the opposing batters, they're fouling balls off up first baseline, which means they're not really getting a good sight of the pitches on his fastballs particularly and getting late swings because of that. Burnett fastball missing up again. Off speed and a shot into left field for a base hit. We have our first hit of the ball game with Jason Kivenow who will round the bag and go back and see if he can advance from there. Mitch Williams, the designated hitter, will bat next. This is a nice job by Kivenow staying in there on the curveball. Maybe getting a little bit too creative. Burnett going to the curveball based on Kimenow's swings against the fastball being behind. 
you had to kind of believe that he could catch up to an off speed. So you might want to pound the zone a little bit more with that fastball. Williams batting with two men out here. And Burnett will make the runner retreat to first base. Mitch Williams has really come on the second half of the year. And if you're going to play better in one half or the other, do it down the stretch. He has been that kind of a player. Big lead at first base by Kimenow. Only two stolen bases on the year. But he's really out there a little bit further than comfort level, having a lot of confidence in being able to get back to first base. Being extremely, normally you have two, two and a half steps. You can see he went out four steps from that angle. See the first baseman with sunglasses on, those on the right side of the field. Boy, a nice scoop that time by Curtis. On the throw over, if Williams is able to keep this inning alive, Ben Sites, the number nine hitter, would be next. And Williams swings through the 0-2 pitch. And they strand a runner. So we head to the bottom of the second inning. Clever and in South Callaway, we are scoreless. From Metter Park in Springfield. Back in a moment. There's a look at some of the clever fans who are here supporting their Blue Jays in the Class 2 semifinals. Clever at a 20-minute drive. You could walk from, from home <laughs> if you wanted to, but nobody wants to. Very convenient for the clever Blue Jays and their fans. No hotel, sleeping in your own bed tonight. David Pennywell, the shortstop, 395 hitter as a senior, and he takes one to center field. Boy, just hit it too hard, didn't he? The line drive to center in the first out on one pitch. Nice stroke by Pennywell again. Hunter Leeper pounding the zone, attacking the clever batters. Maybe the best name of the tournament that I've seen so far, the first baseman, Ranger Curtis. 338 hitter as a junior. Had a nice play on a pickoff move to keep it in front of him. Not let that ball go down the right field line. He looks at strike one. He's got a little bit of a mask up there. You can see biting on the, his undershirt. Don't think I've ever seen that before, but whatever works, you know how it is with baseball and superstitions and habits. Well, if you have a routine, you have to do it every time. That one will sail out of play down the left field line, and he's in a hole 0-2. Might go through a few undershirts that way, though. There's another one. <laughs> if he's hitting, somebody's <laughs> going to find another undershirt for him. You can see 338 batting average, 21 RBI on the season. 16 strikeouts on the year. Down to the count. 0-2. And not willing to chase the fastball up and away. Leaper working quickly as Burnett has done for the other side. Oh, 
Breaking ball holds the bat back and the count goes 2-2. Two -two. I guess it's kind of a kind of a, a, a binky of sorts with yes. your shirt that way. <laughs> but you know what? When you look at his numbers, it's working. You're exactly right. And if it ain't broke, don't fix mm -hmm. it, especially in baseball. Probably more so in baseball than most any other sports. You'll see guys that they get into a habit and they just stick with it. Maybe a little bit with golf. But uh, baseball, you see it more times than not. Well, there are baseball players that wear a mouthpiece. Fouled straight back. And it stays 2-2. Sometimes the, you know, if you take a bad hop in the mouth, it often can take a while to mentally get over that. Yep. And if you need that mouth guard just to give you a little confidence, and he swings the off speed pitch, and it's strike three, two down. The leaper's doing a great job mixing up his pitches. He went with the curveball earlier, went down and in, threw a couple of fastballs, and then breaks off a nice changeup. Nice little tail away from the left handed batter. Good location for the third strike. This is Tyler Martin with two outs. Down to the count 0-1. The junior hitting two, uh, 324 there, right fielder. Sixth in the order with Clever still looking for their first base runner of the game. Fouls it off and he is down to the count 0-2. And and one of the comments that Justin Snyder made to us before the game was in districts, nearly half of their hits were bunts. This is a team that can drop it down for a base hit or to move the runner. They do like to play small ball. On 0-2 to the shortstop. Helsel, the long throw across, and he got it. The freshman makes the play. And again, it's one, two, three, six up, six down. We go top of the third, no score. South Callaway and Clever back in Springfield in a moment. We are still scoreless. Top of three, South Callaway and Clever in a Missouri Class II baseball semifinal. Take a look at the final four and show you how these teams got here. And South Callaway thought that it might be easy when you look at the two games that got them here, 19-2 and 11-0, the victories preceding this game against Clever. Clever 26-3 having played more game and games in South Callaway, 19 and five. They had some rainouts along the way where they just, sometimes you can't make them all up. And you know what's very unique about Clever is that because they have no football program, they're actually able to play fall baseball. So you look at over the course of the entire school year, they played an extra 20 games. So instead of being just 26 and three, they're actually were 17 or 18 and two in the fall and 26 and three in the spring. So a lot of baseball being played by the Blue Jays. Ben Sykes, the center fielder, hits one in the air to left. Del Toro will squeeze it for the first out. The Sykes kind of the 16, second Hunter leadoff Leeper. hitter in this lineup. Original leadoff hitter would be Hunter Leeper by virtue of his on-base percentage. 550 hitter coming into the final four. Three home runs. He popped out to short his first time up. Seeing Burnett second time, and he has a better result this time. Ramming one, a hole in the left side, and South Callaway has a base runner. This young man is a very good athlete. You can see how he carries himself on the mound and in the batter's box. Over 500 average, 11 doubles on the year. 
three home runs and five Ks. And part of the reason is how quiet his body is. You can see just an effortless swing, but the ball just jumps off his bat for the single. Now this will be an opportunity for Dex Helsel to try to move the runner. Freshman shortstop. And they do send the runner leaper. And he flares it toward left and out of play down to the count 0 1. Not much power by Helsel, but good bat control. Hit and run going on for the for the Bulldogs in that situation, trying to drive the ball to left field, where we saw he flew out early in the ball game. Well, they're going to get a lot of games out of him over the next three years. A freshman starter with Corey Hanger in the three hole right behind him. Same scenario, same class. And he earned this playing time and, and he will do a lot of good things for them over the next three years. The lefty takes a look. Catcher bluffs the throw down. Wolf made him think about that. And Garrett Wolf is behind the plate for a reason today. A little bit of a juggling match between decision making as far as putting Wolf on the mound or having Burnett be the starter. They go with Burnett. And main reason was they wanted Wolf to be able to slow down the run game. Ryder is going. Helsel lifts it in the air. Short center field. And it's the second out of the inning. Nice job by Leeper at first base, running on the pitch, taking a peek at his fourth or fifth step, noticing the ball hit in the air and was able to retreat back to first base. Corey Hanger will bat with two outs here in the third. He singled, stole a base, but was stranded in a good long at bat in the first inning, first time he saw Burnett. First pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. You can expect Leeper to try to take second base in one of these next two pitches. Corey Hanger gets the single in the first inning, does have good back control, 404. Leeper with a good lead, not going, and a snap throw down, and he has to hustle back in. There's a couple of reasons why, Dave, you would have in this situation Leeper look to take second. You have two strikes on the batter. If he gets thrown out at second, you have a very dangerous Corey Hanger to lead off the inning for the fourth inning. Also, you'd like to have him be in a position to drive in a run if Leeper's able to get to second. In the air, that will drift out of play. And but again, we talked about the players on the right side of the field needing sunglasses and, and wearing them. There was an occasion with Alex Gordon with the Royals a couple of weeks ago where they're talking about his ability to shade the sun with his glove. And my thought was, uh, you're allowed to wear <laughs> sunglasses. You might, but the high school wisdom at this point, advantage high school wisdom. 0-2 again one more time. Burnett breaks contact and the runner has to go back. Got to get a feel for uh, some of the glare you see, the, the sunshine that as it goes down in the west, the left field side, and that's a swing and a miss, strike three, and the throw down will complete the strikeout. Curtis able to make the catch. Burnett has a moment with his catcher, Wolf, and we are still looking for the first run. No score, bottom of three. Clever coming to bat.
No score between South Callaway and Clever. Bottom of three. This is what we're talking about right yes. here, okay? That's camera five. And that is what the infielders and the outfielders on the right side, first base, second base, right field, they're dealing with that kind of a sun going down. It is still going to be an issue for a while. Even though the stadium lights are in, those looking toward home plate on the right side have to deal with it. And you know where that really comes into play. You have some time to shield the sun in pop-ups and fly balls to right field. How about balls that are thrown if the bunt game starts to come into play from the catcher to first base or drop third strikes? Right. You have to be real careful at first base in those situations. Clever still without a base hit, without a base runner. This is Bryce Wilson, the junior third baseman, hitting 323 down to the count 0-1. Wilson jammed on a pitch, fouls it back, and it's 0-2. Wilson, a good defensive third baseman, very strong arm at the hot corner. Leaper 0-2 gets him to chase. And the first out of the third inning is a strikeout of Wilson. 0-2 pitch, wants it out of the strike zone. You can see he gets it up high. A late movement by the catcher, Conrad Kemper, for the third strike. Chase Comer, the DH, batting for the first time. And he looks at strike one. Location, location, location. Seeing both of these pitchers really doing a nice job. Kind of piggybacking off of the first class two game between Summit Christian Academy. And Valley Catholic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, both pitchers in that game really doing a nice job with location. A pitcher's duel, only five hits total in that game. Leeper has retired the first seven that he's faced. Swing and a miss on a pitch up in the zone. There are two down. And again, 0-2, you talk about, you know, throw something that, that they can't hit 0-2. <laughs> and there you go, exhibit B. Very tough to hit a high fastball. You can see nice job by Comrade Kemper squeezing that third strike. Foul tip by the batter. But again, location with that high fastball with two strikes. Tough to catch up to. Number nine hitter is Jordan Burnett, the pitcher, who has done a nice job as well. All three hits so far by South Callaway. Hard up the middle and off a leaper's glove. Deflected to the shortstop, Helsel, who makes the play. Nice job that time by Helsel staying with it. The pitcher, Leeper, redirecting it to the shortstop, throwing it across, and it's nine up, nine down. Clever still looking for a base runner, still looking for a run. As we go to the top of the fourth inning, one more look at it. The freshman, Helsel. And they get it done. Top of the fourth coming. No score. South Callaway, clever. Back in a moment. No scores, South Callaway and Clever in this Missouri Class II semifinal, top of the fourth inning with Dana and Hughes. I'm Dave Stewart. We have seen two pitchers flat out get it done. Exactly. We're watching some great pitching duels. Two, the second game of the day for us, pretty much just like the first game where pitchers are out there competing. 
not trying to pitch around the opposing batters, pounding the zone, good location, good mixture of off speed and fastballs. Just nice to watch. Well, South Callaway does have three hits. The problem is they've scattered them, one in each of the first three innings. Conrad Kemper flew out to the shortstop his first time out. He is batting for the second time. One of the key members of the team that reached the final four, chops it, hits it down to third base, smothered, thrown across, and nicely done. Burnett applauds his third baseman, Wilson with help from Curtis at first base. A nice job, good reaction at third base. A well hit now ball down the third base team, line. Bradley Smart. Good hustle out of batter's box, but you can see Wilson does a nice job using his feet, scrambling up, strike thrown to first for the first out. Bradley Smart grounded out to short, back of the second inning. He takes ball one. Burnett working backwards, throwing a change up early in the count, working back with the fastball late. Fastball misses. And the count goes to Tuna. It's been a rare thing for us to see a count in the hitter's advantage like that. We'll see if he gets a fastball hit, something he can handle. Jam, hit to third. Wilson gobbles it up. Throws it across to Curtis, and there's two men down. And we mentioned this before when Wilson was at bat, batting 323 offensively, but definitely a strength of his is his defensive prowess at third six, base. Smith, Fastball Denver. down and in. Good backhand, shuffle, and strike to first. Backhand short hop, able to make the second out of the inning. Smith Kemper fouls off the first pitch. He popped up to second base back in the second inning. This time earlier this year with a dislocated shoulder. The good thing about young folk, they heal quickly. <laughs> I remember the days, Dave. No, you don't. Distant memories, but I do remember them. <laughs> Burnett goes away with the fastball and count goes one and two. Advantage the pitcher. Burnett five and three coming into this semifinal game with an earned run average under two and dropping at 171. A little bit surprising the 49 and two thirds innings coming in with 22 walks, which is pretty significant number, but but he's worked ahead and worked quickly in this one. He gets him to chase the ball up. And it stays one and two. Smith, one of the sophomores on this team, one of the underclassmen on this team coming back. And you know, they they've been out of school about a week and a half. And I asked Coach, what do you do to, you know, try to get them with some kind of a routine? And I could get them up in the morning, have a practice, swing and a miss. Catcher will have to throw down for the put out and Curtis is there to squeeze it and it's a quick inning for Clever with South Callaway getting nothing the Blue Jays shot coming up next in the bottom of the fourth inning back in a moment There's a look inside of the dugout with 
South Callaway and Clever. And there's the head coach, Justin Snyder, for Clever walking through. Very fun-loving guy. And you talk about playing against his club teams in the summer. And just the, the passion for baseball just dripping. That's what, exactly what you get from him. And when you watch him coach, you watch him interact with his players, uh, a great testament of any coach is that the players want to do anything and everything that the coach asks. And you can, you can see his passion exude amongst his team. Travis Pennewell struck out to begin the ball game, batting the second time here against Hunter Leeper. And he is ahead of the count 0 to by 2-0. Very aggressive first at bat, swinging at pretty much every pitch. Fouls this one off, and it's 2-1. Clever, when you look at their schedule, they've lost one time since April 23rd, and that was to Hart Hartville way back on May 3rd, a 4-2 defeat. They have absolutely piled up wins in a 26-3 year. And there's a bunt. Leaper has to cover, has to hurry. It just does get him by half a step. A nice bunt, but executed beautifully by the pitcher being able to go get it and make a strong throw. Well, we've seen the athleticism by Leaper on the pitcher's mound. Balls ricochet off his glove. We've seen his prowess in the batter's box, but watch him just jump off the mound, recognizing what's happening. The ball perfectly placed bunt down the third base side. You can see the hustle out of the batter's box. A lot of credit to Leeper to get bang-bang play at first base. Coach Snyder talked about all the bunt singles this year. This is the first time we've seen them try to bunt for a base hit. Philip Valance, the senior second baseman, rounded out to second his first time out. And it's 0-2. He will work from behind. Four strikeouts for Leeper to this point. And unwilling to chase. Put a good place for that. Breaking Paul grabs the inside corner for the second out of the inning. Excellent pitch by Leeper here. Curveball that starts out right on the elbow of Valance and breaks perfectly over the plate for the third strike. Haven't seen very many pitches that he's throwing. We've seen him work that fastball and change up. But when you have a complimentary pitch and that type of curveball makes it almost impossible to be effective against. Chance Wolf with first pitch swinging back in the first inning when he grounded out to third. And he takes ball one. 40 RBIs on the season. Looks at ball two. Wolf just a junior. Justin Snyder says he's our best player on the field. He's a leader behind the plate, obviously very effective on the mound also. Out straight back. And Leeper has retired 11 straight batters. But the difference is this second time through the order, and he's been behind the count a little bit to a couple of the hitters. And I think in this situation, this is what you call being effectively wild. He was pounding the zone early first time through. Now he's moving the ball off the plate just a bit. Wolf swing and a miss, and it's 2-2. And also has a different approach. Oftentimes you see pitchers who rely on their curveball go to it too early, and then when the second and third time you get around in the batting order, you've seen all the pitches. Able to hold off as the count goes to 3 2. And, and despite being batting more than 500, 566 coming into the final four, 
The wind is blowing across and the outfield still relatively short. Very short and right. In center shaded a bit toward left. 3-2 pitch. Chopped up the middle. That's going to be a tough play. Helsel will not get there. On the throw. On a bounce. And we finally have a base runner and an infield single to Chance Wolf. And it's, it's one of the plays that the third baseman may be the only one that has a chance momentum moving that way, but it was going to be very difficult to throw him out. Exactly. Leeper can't get to himself, but that's a play that needs to be made by the third baseman. Nice job at first base by Kimenow to block the ball from going out into right field. David Pinnewell now will bat with two outs and a runner on. He had a line drive out to center field his first time at bat. And he looks at strike one. Shortstop hitting nearly 400 his senior year. Leeper takes a look at the runner. And we have time. Not a big lead by Chance Wolf at first base, but Leeper still paying attention to him. Knowing in this situation you're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Anything can happen. Only one hit on the board for the clever Blue Jays. Can't be surprised at them trying to make something happen to get on the board, and get the first run scored of the game. Outfield positioning about the same as it's been as they go from the number three hitter to the cleanup. And it's strike two, it's 0-2. Glamour's being behind the plate, isn't it? <laughs> Tell you what, when you have a good catcher, the catcher is the pulse of the team. He's the heartbeat of the team. His attitude is what everyone feeds off of, defensively especially. We've seen some very good catchers today watching these young men, Chance Wolf for Clever and then Conrad Kemper right there. Really doing a nice job controlling the game. They're calling all their own pitches. You might have bruises all year long if you make a living behind the plate. 0-2 pitch. Sent down and out of play. They will try it again. Clever crowd trying to get something going here, making some noise right in front of us. It's been a good day of baseball. It's been a long day of baseball in class one, followed by class two semifinals. Pennywell swings and misses. And the catcher, Kemper, will tag him for the third out. And despite getting the first hit of the ball game for Clever, they don't do anything with us. We are still scoreless after four from Metter Park in Springfield. Back in Springfield, South Cutaway, clever, our scoreless top of the fifth inning. Danny Hughes has left the booth briefly. They uh, had some kind of a dance-off playing a Beatles song, <laughs> and he 
told all the fans that he could outdance anyone in the house. It has to be a Michael Jackson song. Though. Man, you got back here quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have seen a good ball game. We have seen some good pitching here today. And, you know, sometimes it, it doesn't sound all that sexy pitching and defense, but if you're able to pitch, and play defense, you always have a chance to win. And here's why you see these teams make it to this Final Four, because they can pitch and play defense. And uh, you'd be hard pressed to find a team that makes a lot of errors, that has erratic pitching, that can shore those things up in time to make the state tournament. But both of these teams, and obviously the several teams that we've seen today, Santa Fe, Chiefs win, a barn burner, 3-2 and in eight innings. Just good pitching, solid defense. Will win you more games than not. Jason, Kevin Al had one of the hits in the ball game. Back in the second inning, a line shot to left field. And he leads off here in the fifth with a 1-1 one -one count. In the dirt, skips all the way back. And it's 2-1. As always, we're happy to have some terrific help from the Missouri State High School Activities Association. Jason West was a big assistance to me uh, and Chris Ronan over the past weekend in Jefferson City, again helping us with the baseball in Springfield. A busy, busy time, and it's such a great time of the year when the seasons peak and the championships come and all the kids are they're out of school, but yep. they still get to represent <laughs> their school in many cases one final time, and many times it's their last official athletic competition. 3-1 pitch, sky to the air. Curtis has a chance, but not able to get there just on the warning track right in front of the wall, but can't make the play. Tough play for the first baseman. Good hustle by Curtis right there. A little frustrated with himself, but tough play to be made over by the opposing dugout. Not going to get any help about where the fence is when you're going by the opposing dugout and just missed his outstretched arm. Yeah, blue shirts in that dugout, <laughs> black shirts on the field, and as you can see, the sunglasses now on on top, top of uh, Ranger Curtis's hat. Sun is no longer an issue. It is down as we bat here in the top of the fifth inning. Off speed, lace to left field, and he got the left fielder turned around. Del Toro not able to handle it, and Kevin Al Soars into second base with a two base hit. He is two for two and a runner in scoring position with nobody out here in the fifth. Del Toro playing a little bit shallow out in left field. The wind is blowing out towards left, not necessarily sideways from right to left. A well placed ball out there just over his head for the stand up double. Good hustle out of the batter's box for Kimenow. Two for two on the day so far. Mitch Williams, the DH, who bats eighth. He struck out back in the second inning. The chance to move the runner in a scoreless game. A lot of communication going on for the clever defense, recognizing this is a situation bottom of the, bottom of the lineup with Mitch Williams being the eight hole. This is a, definitely a bunt situation and a crashing first baseman in Curtis. They choose to go away from that and give him a free swing on that first strike. Yeah, Curtis playing on the grass on the first base side. See if they'll consider having him lay one down here. Down to the count 0-1. Go ahead, run at second base. We are scoreless, top of the fifth inning. South Callaway in blue at bat. Swing and a miss. Down 0-2. And struck out on three pitches. His only other at bat. A lot of confidence being displayed in Mitchell Williams. The DH coming into this game, 333 batting average in this situation. Such a close game. You're the visiting team. The textbook writes that you drop a bunt down here, but they're going to go a different direction. That time, Burnett taking a little more time to make the batter think about it. Williams, 15 strikeouts on the season, 0-2. And he looks at the ball just outside of the zone, and it's 
one and two. Burnett has to be very careful. His shortstop is moving in and out behind him at second base, trying to hold the runner true and can easily get out of defensive positioning and open up a big gap. Now, Kevin Al with 10 stolen bases on the season, if you want to think about that possibility, as Williams swings and misses his second strike out of the ball game so far, unable to advance the runner. Nice job, slide step steps in towards the right-handed batter and then works the high fastball up and in. Too tough to take. Can't catch up to it for the first out of the inning. Well, Curtis still playing on the grass on the first base side with Ben Sykes, the number nine hitter. Flew out to left his first time up. Watches a low fastball. Burnett may be deliberately taking a little more time here with runner on base. Down to the count now, 2-0. Seems that he's paying a little bit too much attention to the runner at second base. Kimmon out does have some speed, but in this situation, you have to put a large majority of your focus on the batters. He's done so well so far in this game. Getting a lot of uh, looks from the pitcher, although we really haven't seen the shortstop or second baseman make any kind of a break for the bag. One thing, obviously, they don't want to do is have Burnett sail one into center. There's a ball pounded to left field. Going back, and Del Toro's not going to get there. It's over his head. Kevin out hits the bag at third. They miss the cutoff man into third base for the three base hit. A triple scores. The go-ahead run, Kimono makes it one nothing. South Callaway in front. Great job of hitting. Production from the bottom of the lineup, Ben Seitz comes through a 205 hitter. Drives the ball to deep left center field for the RBI triple. And South Callaway, you know, they had three hits early. The problem was they just couldn't string anything together over the first three innings, but now two extra base hits staying in triple double as we look again. You can see just a change up that stays up and in. And even though Seitz got out on his front foot, drives the ball over to the wall, and then overshoots the cutoff. Nice job on the by the secondary cutoff shortstop, trying to make the relay to third, and an excellent job by Seitz reading the overthrow and taking third base. Yeah, not sure they had a play at the plate. However, if you hit the cutoff man, you might be able to keep that runner from getting to third base. Now the dangerous Hunter Leaper gets an intentional walk to create first and third in this situation. Justin Snyder went out for a trip to the mound to explain to his defense the situation that they were in. Gutsy move here with just one out to create first and third. Leaper has great speed, can steal second. This may be a situation where Snyder is going to allow Wolf to throw through on a possible steal attempt by Leaper. Helsel, the freshman shortstop, pressure on and a bunt, flip to the plate, he got him! Burnett able to cover the bunt. And the runner, Seitz, was out at home plate. It remains 1-0. An outstanding play by Jordan Burnett to field the bunt. If he throws this ball or relays this ball anywhere but right on top of the plate, nice job blocking the plate right there. Head first slide, doesn't get his hand in in time, but an outstanding play by the young pitcher for the second out. Dave, if he throws that ball anywhere up in the zone or even in the rib cage or midsection of Chance Wolf, that guy's safe. Perfectly placed relay home right on top of the plate gets him out. So it stays one nothing. Two down now. Corey Hanger, the runner in scoring position, and a man at first as well. Ball in the dirt. 
with Wolf keeping the ball in front of him. Toward right field and down safely for the base hit and they hold him there at third. The bases are loaded. Hanger doing his job and the sacks are full. And now we have a pretty good idea why these freshmen are playing and batting second and third. We saw Helsa with a, with a nice bunt and then Hanger. And we will have a change with Burnett. Will come out pitching and uh, it may be Wolf coming in because we have a, a whole battery change as we look at uh, one more time. Corey Hanger with the base hit. And, the stop sign put on there. So the bases are loaded now with two outs. Jordan Burnett has nothing to hang his head on. Did an out excellent job in this game. Got touched up just a little bit, but six hits, one run. We talked with Justin Snyder before the game, and he said he was not going to hesitate to bring number 24 in from behind the plate if the game needed him to jump out and they rotate from the third base position. Bryce Wilson will move behind the plate. Chance Wolf will take over on the mound and your previous pitcher Jordan Burnett will now go into shortstop. A little bit of a shuffle for Clever. Chance Wolf. Bryce Wilson will Move behind the plate. And Burnett's good and loose. So he's going to be able to make the throw from the left side of the infield. And, you know, not a true close situation necessarily, but a, uh, a finisher type role. You, because the, the goal at this point is when they get that third out that it's still one nothing. Exactly. And you have a guy that you're putting on the mound that is an ultra competitor. A guy that's a leader and your best player on the team. Obviously a very effective pitcher. A little bit different approach than what we saw with Jordan Burnett. Has a nice curveball, but his power pitching is going to ramp up that fastball in the mid-80s, trying to blow it by the South Callaway Bulldogs. And it's going to be a completely different look. Yeah, the, the contrast from Burnett to Wolf and part of the strategy certainly for Coach Snyder is the fact that this is Conrad Kemper. When you talk heart and soul, Leaper and Kemper, this is a guy where each coach has the player they want in the right spot. Exactly. You would want him to hit and him to be pitching in a one nothing game in the fifth inning with the bases loaded and two out. Your two leaders are in the integral part of the game right here. Take a look at the runners and See their positioning. The sacks are full. That's Helsel in the middle. He's at second base. Conrad Kemper is 0 for 2. Popped up to short, grounded out to third, batting at a critical spot of the game with his team up a run. And he takes ball one. There's nowhere to put him. Yeah. Rounded fair down the line and into the corner that will score at least two. Del Toro tries to chase it down. One run is scored, two runs, three runs is scored, and safe at third base. A three base hit for Conrad Kemper, and from one nothing to four nothing, the South Callaway advantage has jumped. Excellent job of coming through. Exactly what you want to see from your four hole cleanup hitter. Bases loaded, base clearing triple. Three more runs score, four nothing. 
Bulldogs. Sitting fastball, turns on it, drives it just past the third baseman for the triple. Well, Kemper was 0 for 2 coming into that at bat and making the most of the situation. Bradley Smart fouls off the first pitch he sees, and it's 0-1. So in the two class two games that we've seen here in the semifinal action, not a lot of runs. This is by far the biggest explosion to this point. Four runs at the top of the fifth inning. Wolf missing as the count goes to 1-1. One, one. South Callaway, the visiting team. There's a ball in the air to right field. The wind will knock it down for the third out of the inning. Martin squeezes it. South Callaway strands a runner, but scores four, Dana. You can see well hit balls over the heads of the outfielders, extra base hits, timely hitting, bases loaded, meat of the order, making things happen for the Bulldogs, four nothing. With three extra base hits, Clever has some work to do. Bottom of the fifth, coming up next. Nothing South Callaway after the Bulldogs exploded. Top of the fifth inning. A beautiful sight here from Metter Park in Springfield as we take a look at first baseman for Clever. Ranger Curtis. He has a way of doing things, and that's the way he does <laughs> things right there. Unorthodox in its fashion, but effective for him. Foul straight back, and the count is one and one. I can think of another player at a higher level that did that. I just can't think of his name. It's been done before, okay? It has been, okay. It's, it's not an original idea. You're going to enlighten me because I, I don't, don't know. remember it. One o'clock in the morning, <laughs> I'll think of it, and I'll, and I'll text you. Yeah, How about there that? we go. <laughs> Have your phone on silent. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Very good, clever team. Has some work to do. Down by four. Breaking ball laid off at 2-2. Hunter Leeper has gone the distance. Working a shutout here. It was fifth inning of work. Just one hit given up. It was in the last inning. Borderline. Ball three. Full count now. Good location by that fastball. He's really mixing up his pitch as well. Curve balls to the lefty, not really being predictable. Almost snuck that fastball by for the third strike. Three two pitch. In the air left side. Not going to be a problem. Hanger is there. One down. A little bit tricky out there. Nice job by the left fielder, Corey Hanger, staying with it. Wind dying down at times. Seems like it's changing between every pitch. 
Talk about the freshmen and some of the baby faces on this team, and <laughs> begging teammates for rides to practice. Uh, not old enough to do it. There's strike one. Ty Tyler Martin will work with a no one count, grounded out to shortstop back in the second. Low and it's 1 1. Martin, one of the underclassmen, he's a junior, takes strike two. There's that curveball again, working it in all counts. 1 1 count, drops the curveball off, really has good command of that pitch. A little extra on the fastball that time by Leaper, but just misses outside, and it's 2-2. <laughs> you know what? He smells blood in the water. When he has two strikes, he's had a tendency of ramping up that fastball with two strikes in the count. Kemper tried to bring it back in. This time, off speed, swing and a miss. And there are two down as we look at this strikeout again. Leaper doing a nice job. Great approach by Leaper again. Good balance, still got good stuff. That's your curveball right on the outside part of the plate. Bryce Wilson struck out his only other time up. Fouls went out of play. Seven strikeouts for Leaper through four and two thirds. Swung on toward Helsel at short. The freshman throws his strike across, and it's three up, three down. Clever, not able to cause any trouble at all, and the one hitter is still working for Leaper. 4 nothing, South Callaway. Bulldogs bat next. Some pretty pictures from Springfield, Missouri. As we look at Missouri Class 2 semifinal baseball, and it's not just for the baseball players, it's for the fans, friends, family. Both sides. Potential pictures for Twitter or Facebook, which I know you're very active with both. Yes, I'm a... What is it, a my face or face space guy? <laughs> Quit acting old. <laughs> First pitch, ground ball, and it's a base hit. We'll sneak through. And uh, one of those diving plays where the ball was redirected. And Smith Kemper has things going here in the top of the sixth inning. South Callaway looking for more. Clever has been a team that has scored in spurts, so you can't get very comfortable, even with a 4-0 lead, good command from the mound, and what you're getting from Hunter Leeper. I still have to continue to put your foot on the gas pedal. Pennywell sneaking in at third, just in case they think about bunting. Jason Kimenow has caused a lot of the problems here in this game, two for two. Going to get double to lead things off in that four-run fifth inning. 
to start the rally. Batting again. A lot of emphasis and a focus is always put on the top four hitters in any lineup. But Dave, I challenge you to, to tell me when there's a time when you d aren't successful when your bottom three guys are successful. Your team just seems to be, you know, be more productive offensively. And you look at Ben Seitz coming through with the triple last inning. Talked about Jason Kimenow, two for two on the game so far. Production by the bottom third of this lineup has been very helpful. Yeah, it was seven, eight, nine, double and triple to get it back to the top of the order. And of course, the huge three run triple by Conrad Kemper after the pitching change when Wolf came in to spell Burnett. 2-2 is a count. Go back to that fifth inning. The triple started by Ben Seitz, the nine hole. Then an intentional walk to Hunter Leeper. That kind of opened up the floodgates where they tried the squeeze. Clever was able to get the out. But then from there. 2-2 two -two pitch hits. got him looking. Kevin Al goes down for the first time. Number 21, Good location by Wolf here. Fastball just on the outside part of the plate. And Kimenow knew it. Mitch Williams has batted twice. He has struck out twice. The designated hitter in the eight hole. In the air. And should land out of play and does. Clever down by four with two more at bats. Swing and a miss by Williams. And time is a factor. In that there have been precious few opportunities. Clever with just the one base hit. That came in the fourth inning when Chance Wolf singled. 0-2 pitch misses up. And it's 1-2 to Williams. Well, checks the runner. And ground ball to third. And they turn it. On a bounce to first, the ball gets away and the runner will advance. Curtis not able to handle the ball in the dirt. If they do get the lead runner, then the base runner will move on to second base. Philip Valens takes a chance at trying to turn the double play. Ball did not seem to be hit hard enough to third. To have a play at first, you can see good footwork and throw to second. But right there, it seemed to take a little bit of extra time to get that turn and nice job and hustle by Mitchell Williams to get down to first and recognize the errant throw and go to second. Ben Seitz wants time and is granted. And that ball bounced at first base in front of Curtis. It, it stayed flat. It, it didn't yeah. bounce up at all. And you have the new catcher, Bryce Wilson, who in that situation, if he had the chance to do it again, might go back and back up first base so that you don't have this same situation. Fastball up and pounded to left field and down safely. Runner stumbles around third, but it's not going to matter. He will score easily. And it's 5 nothing with Mitch Williams coming in to add to the Bulldog advantage. Costly errors and mistakes by Clever. Aaron throw on the double play attempt. Gets Mitchell Williams to second base and the single scores him to go up 5-0. Well, Hunter Leeper was 
given that intentional walk and did score in the rally in the fifth inning. One for two, he had a single in the third. And that time South Callaway getting it done with two outs. There's no law against the two out rally. We've seen big hits for them, the triple. Coming in the fifth by Conrad Kemper. Insights that time to make it 5 nothing. Runner is going. Throw to second, and he beat it. Ben Seitz, the senior center fielder, coming through at the bottom of the lineup. Two for three, he now has a stolen base. I think if you look on the field right now, nice jump. Doesn't look in, it's a straight steal. Gets there safely. Young man in the batter's box, Hunter Leeper, the gentleman at second base, and Ben Seitz. Two guys that you can make an argument. Hit hard to third. Knocked down the throw across for the third out. But South Callaway will get another run and lead it by five. It's a five-nothing game. Clever needs to get it started offensively right about now. Back in a moment. Five nothing, South Callaway leads Clever. Valley Catholic has already advanced to Thursday's Class Two Championship game at four o'clock. And South Callaway would like to punch their ticket. Clever here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Lifted on the first base side and no damage done for Chance Comer, sophomore DH. Hunter Leeper has gone the distance and he has been very good, not even allowing a base runner of any kind until the fourth inning when Chance Wolf had his two out single. And, and that's been it, the only base runner of the game. Pitch is up. It's 1 1. Only base runner of the game. No clever Blue Jay has touched second or third base in this ball game. Toward right field and fair just inside of the line. And he'll try to go to second base. Comer, and he gets by the tag. A two base hit to begin things here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And there's your runner to second base. Chance Comer, the sophomore, trying to get something going here. Well, I spoke too soon. Sophomore Chance Comer, DH, does a nice job fighting off a pitch, drives it right over the first baseman's head, and hustles out of the batter's box to be able to take two. Good job by the right fielder, Bradley Smart, getting the ball in, but not before Comer could reach second base safely. And David Del Toro will go to run for Comer at second base. 
The hitter is Jordan Burnett. He's only batted one time. That was making out back in the third inning. And a ball that was hit up the middle, deflected off the pitcher, thrown out by the shortstop. Burnett, the pitcher of record. He started this game before giving way to Wolf, who allowed the three-run triple. But it is the era of aluminum bats. Whether they're dumbed down or not, you know these kids can score some runs. Yes, they can. And the scouting report on the Clever Blue Jays is a team that scores in spurts. And I'm sure Justin Snyder is in that dugout encouraging these young men to not to give up and to stick with the plan. You never know. The home team on the scoreboard may have an opportunity to make things happen. Well, it will have to do it the hard way. Burnett now down to the count 0-2. Swings, trickles one foul. Clever's website for the high school talks about scholarship, character, honor, and success. We'll talk about core values, pretty good place to start. And some of the principles and values and lessons we learn in athletics last forever. Absolutely right. Win or lose. Pitches up, Burnett takes it. Now, it's more fun to learn the lessons out of the wins, but that doesn't happen for everybody. Hunter Leeper has done a terrific job on the mound. No runs allowed, just two hits. And there's strike three. Burnett looked at it, and he will have to have a seat. And it's up to the top of the order now with Travis Pennywell. Excellent pitch by Leeper here. The sweeping curveball been so effective, and you can see Burnett knows it, gets buckled, looks at the third strike. Might not have recognized the rotation. Travis Pennywell is center fielder, wants to step out and go through his pre-pitch routine. He's struck out back in the first inning and out on a bunt attempt in the fourth. Looks at strike one. Nice change up, mixing it up again. First pitch of the at bat. Works a change up to the leadoff hitter in Pennywell. Just a lot of poise out of Hunter Leeper in this start. When Jared Wood, their head coach, talked about heart and soul, we, we understand now. Hit on the ground left side. That's a base hit to left field. Bobbled there. And it'll be runners on the corner. First and third with one out. In a 5 nothing game. And Clever showing some signs of life here. This is a nice job of hitting by Pennywell. Sees that same deadly curveball and stays in there just enough to drive it between the third and baseman and shortstop. Good balance here. Stays back. Drives it for the single. Good speed out of the batter's box as well. First and third and one out. Philip Balance will step in. I don't know for two night. Grounding out to second, striking out in the fourth. For the chance to get a runner here with men on the corners. When you talk about stay back, I used to have that debate with Kevin Seitzer about stay back, stay back. He would always correct me and say, stay balanced, balanced stay balanced. Yeah. I'm like, okay, we're, we're, <laughs> we're splitting we, we hairs. We mean the same thing. <laughs> we're saying two different things. But you're right. He, he was balanced, and he was back. Leaper taking a little more time on the first and third fake. Leaper oh. being a very complete pitcher in these situations with the first and third not focusing in any one particular area and still able to deal strikes. Good fastball inside. Tied up the hitter Valance. Playing his last two games, one of the seniors on this team. 
Our thanks to the athletic director, Teresa Hannaford, for her work with Clever High School. And there's that breaking ball again. And it's 0-2. Talk with Jared Wood before the game in his first year as the South Callaway head coach spoke so highly of Hunter Leeper and talked about his pitching repertoire and his fastball, how he leaned on it so much, but knew that his curveball, when he's throwing it in this fashion, it's tough to hit. Misses 0-2. But I'm not sure you want to throw a strike, O2. That's right. Have a couple of pitches to waste. Been a very efficient night for Hunter Leeper. He tries again, goes breaking ball, and down on strikes is Philip Balance for the second out in the bottom of the sixth inning. Being a pitcher. You see this young man on the mound, that's exactly what he looks like. A guy that's not throwing on the mound, a guy that's not just a better athlete, but a pitcher, has a plan, has a program. Great command of each one of his pitches and very effective today. Chance Wolf with one of the three hits and the fourth hit of the game. Wolf sends it to the wall on a hop. One run will score. Two runs will score, and it's 5-2. Chance Wolf coming through with a stand-up double on a ball off the wall, and don't touch that dial. Clever showing life here in the sixth inning. Chance Wolf has been the lone bright spot for the Clever Blue Jays offensively, coming through in the clutch, trying to help his cause. Curveball out and over the plate. Nice balanced swing. One hopper to the fence for a two RBI. Chance Wolf now two for three on the night. First pitch to David Pennywell of strike one. Now that's confidence right there. You see Hunter Leeper throws the curveball. Chance Wolf makes him pay with the two RBI double. Comes right back up with the same curveball for the first strike. Leaper still with a three run lead. Tying run is in the on deck circle. One one count to Pennywell who's 0 for 2 with a line out to center and a strikeout in the fourth. Time called, Leeper didn't see it. He still looks strong. He's, he's been efficient in his performance. He hasn't thrown a great deal of pitches, and with the conditions, he appears to be in pretty good shape. But keep in mind, it's the third time through the order, and they've seen him a couple of times. Able to resist and not swing. Pennywell takes the ball and it's 2-1. For the seniors closing out a fine high school career. For a team that's 26-3 coming into this semifinal game. Holds off again and it's 3-1. One thing we haven't seen is a base on balls from Leeper. That's Chance Wolf at second base after a double off the wall scored a couple. Pennywell swings and misses strike two. Three, two, full count now with two out here. If he gets on base, that would bring the tying run to the plate in the big fella, Ranger Curtis, the first baseman. Nothing going in the Bulldogs bullpen in this situation. 
total confidence in Leeper. Pennywell up the middle. Helsel, the freshman, throws across and makes the play. And Clever gets two, but no more. South Callaway able to limit the damage behind Hunter Leeper on the mound. 5-2 South Callaway as we go to the top of the seventh. There's the moon you wanted to see, Danan. Right there. <laughs> beautiful night. It is. It has been. A little bit more beautiful, I suspect, for the teams that were playing championship games. And all the fans enjoying what's been a terrific run to get to this point. Oh, sad faces over there. They have Blue Jays shirts on might be a little excited now that Blue Jays got things going in the bottom of the sixth inning. Now it's never too late. The freshman shortstop Dak Helsel who made the final out in, in the last half inning acting like he had done it a million times able to make that final defensive play batting here for the fourth time. Flares won out of play, left side, 1-1. One, one. Left fielder for Clever, David Del Toro, playing a little bit more shallow. That's where Helsel has sprayed the ball to left field. Fouls went back to the screen. And it's 1-2. Yeah, very, very short in the outfield. You can see the pan from left to right. A little bit deeper in right field if he were able to lift the ball and pull it that way. Chance Wolf on the mound. After starting the game behind the plate with Burnett pitching. Outside. Now it goes 2-2. Two -two concern with playing shallow in the outfield is that if he does get a hold of a ball down the lines, that ball can roll a long way. You see 350 markers on the left and right field lines. Extra base hits. Line shot up the middle. Right to the second baseman. Throw across to Curtis and Valance makes the play at second base for the first out. Now on the base, number five. Corey Hanger, part of that four-run uprising in the fifth inning. He has a couple of hits on the night. Looks at strike one, and I imagine their summer baseball season, they, they may get like three minutes off and then start the summer <laughs> schedule. <laughs> Probably not much. We're almost to June. Hanger back to the pitcher. Wolf 
throws to Curtis and quickly there are two down in the top of the seventh. South Callaway with a 5 2 lead, that four run explosion, the biggest offensive output we've seen in a Class 2 semifinal. Here's one of your heroes of the day, one for three with a triple, three RBI, had that triple in the fifth inning. Now well, it was that dream matchup, Wolf. And there's one down the line, fair, and at least two bases. And in standing up is Conrad Kemper. Triple, double, his last two times up. Doesn't have to be pretty. He runs very well for a catcher. You can see he gets out on his front foot on the curveball, but has enough power behind it to drive it just past the outstretched arm at third base. David Pennywell. And no lead is ever big enough. Runner second with two outs here, top seven. Ball low to Bradley Smart, who's 0 for 3, a couple of grounds out and a fly to right. It's a nice job right there. You can see he catches the ball, not necessarily your conventional way of blocking a ball in the dirt, but effective nonetheless. Another tap back to the mound. Wolf throws his strike to Curtis. And we will go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Clever needs three runs to tie, four to win. 5-2 South Callaway, Bulldogs over the Blue Jays. We're back in a moment. Five two South Callaway leads clever in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's been all about that guy. Hunter Leeper. He lost his no hitter Dane in the fourth. He lost a shutout in the sixth. What he's never lost though. His lead in this ball game. He has and he's been extremely effective. Change up fastball curveball has been deadly against both sides of the plate. Nine strikeouts on the game. At least one strikeout in every inning so far. Great day for that young man. And he will face five, six, seven. Curtis, Martin, and Wilson here in the seventh inning with a three run cushion to work with. With the idea that they would like to play for the championship on Thursday at four o'clock against Valley Catholic in this very ballpark. Now this young man has to understand the importance of pitching with a lead. Up five to two in the last inning. Has to go after the first batter. Doesn't want to give any life to the clever dugout. Rally caps over there. Fan standing. A lot of excitement brewing. Can be shut down very quickly by Hunter Leeper. Three scheduled hitters, a combined 0 for 6, each with a strikeout. First pitch to Ranger Curtis is ball one. And he looks at strike one or even. I'm telling you, 1.30 in the morning, I'm going I'm to remember who <laughs> used to do that with his shirt. That is definitely a trivia question. But, but I can only do it with the assist of my mobile internet. John Pope from the truck is telling us Lenny Dykstra, but I believe 
He always had a mouthful of wood chips. Yes. I, I think it was more garbage in his mouth and just constantly spitting out stuff. See, if, if two I of us... I don't remember Jersey. If either of us old fogies were part of Twitter, we'd probably have this answer by now if we had some <laughs> Twitter followers. Yeah, one, two. Curtis hits one the other way to left and will be retired by Hanger. The freshman able to come up and aggressively play that for the first out of the seventh inning. He was going to come up and take that away. He was not going to let that ball drop on a bounce. That's just a nice job and a great jump on that line drive. Tyler Martin, junior right fielder with an 0 for 2. Starts with ball one. You yeah, see, you need to embrace the internet. There, there, there's so much out there. I, I know you're a busy guy. Dave, I still got encyclopedias in my house. <laughs> the internet is just a fad. You heard it first. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, what, the Rubik's Cube. It's just a fad. Yep. 2-0 pitch. Martin takes strike one. If anybody can get this inning beyond the first three batters, it would be Chance Comer, who has a double on the night. Count is even now, 2-2. Two, two. Breaking ball, fouled back off the screen. So impressed by this young man's composure on the mound and how much confidence he has in that curveball. It's been so effective. He's been able to keep it around the plate, buckle a few batters. Hadn't really changed in tempo, demeanor, command of his pitches. 2-2. Two -two. And I uh, wondered if it, it hit him. It did not. It may have caught the catcher in the hand. Glamorous job back there. 3-2, full count now to Tyler Martin. And he looks at strike three. South Callaway, one out away from the championship game. Talk about his composure, effectiveness. Works that 2-2 fastball up and in and then still has the confidence to bring that same fastball right over the heart of the plate. Bryce Wilson batting for the third time and an 0 for 2 night. And it's 0-1. One of the few hitters that we have seen not down on the handle, not on the knob. He chokes up a bit. Swings and misses, 0-2. Now one strike away. And he hit him. Breaking ball that didn't bite. And it hit Wilson in the back. And Chance Comer will have a chance to keep this inning alive. Tries to rear back into the tank to make that final strike. Gets a little bit too much on it. Pretty much the first errant pitch that we've seen from Leeper all evening. Colin Gilmore will pinch run for Wilson. See the fastball just gets away from him. It's a little anxious. Adrenaline flowing, trying to seal the deal with another strikeout. And gives up the free pass. Justin Snyder is going to manage this thing to the very, very end. Do what he can. Problem is the tying run is in the on-deck circle in Jordan Burnett. Chance Comer will try to save him and at bat. With two down, bottom of the seventh inning at a 5-2 ball game. Comer's a sophomore who will have a couple of good years left to contribute to this program. A strikeout, double, and a run scored. Can't pull the trigger. It's 
One and one. Swinging at a pitch out of the zone. And Leaper is one strike away. Leaper showing great poise here, the senior working a complete game. Did he go? Yes, he did. And South Callaway is going to the championships on Thursday against Valley Catholic. South Callaway beats Clever 5-2, your final in this Missouri Class II semifinal. A beautiful effort by Hunter Leeper, getting it done, going the distance, winning his fourth game of the year as the Bulldogs advance to play for the title on Thursday. Great job, great display by the South Callaway Bulldogs. Coming away with the victory, advance to the Class II championships tomorrow afternoon. We'll take a break, come back. Final thoughts, South Callaway defeats Clever High School 5-2. Back to Metter Park in a moment. Five two South Callaway beats Clever in this Class Two semifinal by virtue of a four run fifth inning. Get a shot at Valley Catholic. It was a tight game, a low scoring game, a scoreless game until that. Well, by comparison, explosion, Dana. Yes, it was. The fifth inning was a treasure for the South Callaway Bulldogs, scoring four of their five runs in that inning. Did an excellent job of pitching by Hunter Leeper. Ten strikeouts on the day, only giving up four hits. Well, it sets up a finals showdown against Valley Catholic. Winners over Summit Christian Academy from Lee Summit, Missouri. Four very solid baseball teams. Only two will play for the title, South Callaway and Valley Catholic. With Dana Hughes and our entire Time Warner Cable Metro Sports crew, I'm Dave Stewart. Good night from Springfield.